What do you think about this when the guy came in here and just fired a shot? Uh, he, I told him, man, what, what are you doing, man? He told me, wait, wait. I said, something like that, he went back and come up with the shotgun. I said, what the hell are you doing? Is he crazy or something? For what? I mean, he started shooting. He shot one time and ran away. You seen anything like that before? Nope. No. <laughs> no, never. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is unbelievable. What we continue to learn throughout this journey is that somebody has to pay for this. Somebody has to pay for the people who have no insurance, who need medical help when they are shot. Well, of course, who are those people? It's us. It's the taxpayers. Well, according to the state, not including self-inflicted and unintentional injuries, taxpayers, they shelled out more than $7.6 million in Medicaid payouts throughout the state. Nearly 45% of that, more than $3.4 million, came from the city of Detroit alone. And that does not include the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars related to any cost for riding an ambulance. Well, we rode along with police, Detroit police, for several days out here. They're doing everything they can to reduce guns and get guns off the streets. These are all homicide long guns. These were all used in connection with a homicide in the city of Detroit. They did us a favor, a privilege. They took us inside the gun vault, their secret location, never been shown before to any media at all. Last year, they tell me in 2015, they recovered 3,645 guns. We got a chance to take a look at all the guns they've taken off the streets. How many different types of guns do you think are down here? Well, I would say that we have probably one of every type of gun weapon ever made. I know nothing about guns, but if I were to walk in here, it looks like there's a lot of long guns, you know? I'm, yes. I'm sure there's handguns in the barrels, but it seems like the majority of this stuff, especially if it was crimes, looks like a long gun, a rifle, or stuff like that. Is that what people are, is that their gun of choice, so to speak? Um, a lot of these are shotguns, and that's uh, uh, probably a gun of choice a lot of times. Um, they saw them off to make them more deadly. What's the one gun or the one thing that might have shocked you or you were like, wow, I can't believe this was on the streets or you know, this came in here. Is there anything that really like stood out to you? Uh, we took in a, a AR-15 or actually an M-16 that had a grenade launcher attached to it. And that kind of... And it, somebody was using that on, on the streets? They probably didn't have the grenades for the grenade launcher, but they had that weapon. Many times there's blood, biological evidence, blood on this stuff. And you realize the impact and the toll it's taking on the family. This is important stuff. You're keeping track of all the guns that could solve crimes and help people and, you know what I mean, the, the justice and the closure that people like to talk about. Idiots like me and reporters want to <laughs> ask for the justice and the closure. This is the room that can bring that, and this, and you're one of the men in charge of, you know, keeping everything intact. Well, we're, we're proud that we find everything. We've got a handle on it. We, sometimes it's not exactly where it's supposed to be, but we, we track it down and we find it. And it makes us feel really good, especially when we know it's going to court and they need it.